Good evening, and welcome to the Sunday evening service of the Port Norris Baptist Church in Port Norris, New Jersey. I'm Pastor George Riddell. We're delighted that you have decided to join us this evening. I trust that tonight's message will be one that will encourage you to remain faithful in the Lord. <clears throat> in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and that's where we are in Sunday night service, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and uh, verses 1 through 9, Paul is basically talking to Timothy and he's telling him, Timothy, you need to remain faithful. You are in the last days. You need to remain faithful. And Paul is encouraging him to do that. And he talks about uh, these last days. And uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll get into that exactly what he's saying. So Father, bless this time around your word. I thank you for it. Thank you for the opportunity of sharing it one more time with these dear and precious folks. Thank you for this dear ministry that you've given to us. And we pray, Lord, that we'd be an encouragement and a blessing to all that attend here and all that are attending through uh, uh, YouTube. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. In 2 Timothy 3, Paul writes here, and he's talking about the last days. And he says this, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt mind, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. So Paul, once again, is warning Timothy that these are the last days, these are going to be difficult days, and he mentions and he uses the word perilous times, and in the last days, perilous times should come. <clears throat> that means that there will be difficult times. There will be times that are hard to handle, times that are hard to comprehend, and there will be a falling away. That's what we call apostasy, and that's what Paul is talking about here. Let me remind you, he's not talking about the unsaved here in 2 Timothy 3. He's talking about the church. So the last days of the church, really, I'm not quite sure just how to say it to you, but really aren't great. Uh, they're very difficult days. They're very challenging days. And they're days when people in the church are going to be falling by the wayside and becoming apostate. What is an apostate? We defined that last week for you. An apostate is a person who professes Christ but never possessed Christ. So these last days are going to be difficult days. And so notice once again in 2 Timothy 3, and look at verse number 1. This also know that in the last days perilous times shall come. Think, turn over with me, if you would, to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Just a few pages back, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And let's just look at these last days and perilous times. 2 Timothy 4, look at verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, in other words, the Holy Spirit of God is speaking, obviously through the Word of God, that in the latter times, that is in the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So in the latter days, we should see people that are being pulled away from the truth of the gospel unto lies and seducing spirits and Paul says and doctrines of devils look with me if you would to first John and chapter 2 first John chapter 2 and look at verse number 18 first John chapter 2 verse number 18 he says uh, John writes here he says little children it is the last time these are the last days and ye shall have heard that the Antichrist shall come even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. And uh, <clears throat> notice what he says in verse number 19. They went out from us, they went out from us, 
but they were not of us, for had they been of us, they would not have, uh, they, would, uh, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out, and they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. In other words, when you see people drop by the wayside, or people that at one time were in the church and seemed to be fine Christians and profess Christ, and then you see them following false doctrine, then you see them going after seducing spirits. Now, they may not realize they're being seduced, but false doctrine is false doctrine. False doctrine only comes from one place, out of hell, from Satan himself. So when you see other people that you might have thought, they were good Christians, what on earth happened? They went out from us. Why? Because they were never of us. Now, I'm not talking about those that may leave a church and go to another Bible-preaching church. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those that would leave a fundamental Bible-believing church to go to a false church like the Jehovah's Witness, like the Seventh-day Adventist, the Mormon church, this sort of thing, where they really don't preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. Turn over to Jude with me, if you would. Look at Jude, chapter, uh, Jude, verse, excuse me, verse number 17. Notice what it said. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there would be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. The, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having the spirit. If you don't have the spirit of God, you've never been born again. So he's warning Timothy and he's, he's saying to them, you know, you need to be careful, Timothy. Stay strong, stay true to the word of God. They would, there would be those who would depart from the faith. There would be those that would deny the deity of Jesus Christ. For example, if you do not believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, it's an impossibility for you to be saved. Because Jesus Christ, he said, I and the Father are one. Is the Father God? Yes. Then is Jesus God? Absolutely, because the Father and Him are one. You tell, show me a person that does not believe in the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ and does not accept His blood atonement, then I'm going to show you a person that really doesn't know Christ as their own personal Savior. Uh, you know, it burns my heart to have to say that, but it's true. My responsibility is to give out the truth, uh, not to make it the way people would like it, but to make it the way God presented it in His Word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You're either going to get into heaven, God's way, and that is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're going to die and go to hell any way you choose. But you're not going to go to heaven without the blood of Christ being applied to your heart and to your life. So there are those then that would succeed, that would pull away from the church. And Paul writes to, them, writes to Timothy here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And he says, perilous time shall come. And then he goes on in verses 2 and following. And he gives us 21 characteristics of the last days of the church. Um, as we go through these this evening, why don't you just sort of check in your own heart and mind. Am I seeing any of this happen today? Because, beloved, I think we are. I think we are seeing these things happen today. And I'm not saying that the Lord is coming tomorrow. He may come tomorrow. He may come tonight before this service is over. He may come tomorrow, but he may not come for another thousand years. I don't know when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming, and neither does anybody else. And I know in my lifetime I've heard preachers talk about they've figured out when Jesus Christ is coming, and they've every one, every one of them turned out to be wrong. And I knew they would, because no man knows the day nor the hour which the Son of Man will appear. No man. God hasn't revealed that in his word or anywhere else. That's a secret kept in the heart of God. And yet, unfortunately, there are many people that buy into that heresy uh, of trying to uh, predict when Christ is coming. I've known of people, I didn't know them personally, but I've known of them, to uh, uh, go and sell everything they had, go to the mountaintop, and just wait for the Lord uh, to return. What foolishness and irresponsibility. And I'll be honest with you. What false preaching it takes to get people to do that. So, notice with me, if you would, the perversion of the people in verses 1 through 7. The perversions of the people. What are the characteristics of the last days of the church? Well, look at verse number 2. For men, let's begin now. There's 21 characteristics here. For men shall be lovers 
of their own selves. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh, in other words, man, man will do everything which is right in his own eyes. Uh, they they basically establish themselves as God. Uh, have you ever heard the phrase, and I have, and I'm sure many of you have, somebody look at you and you, if you said, you know, well, that's wrong. You ought not to be doing that as a Christian, uh, or you ought not to be doing that just as a person. And they look at you and say, who are you to judge me? Who are you to judge me? Now, <clears throat> you may be standing on the word of God, and I trust that you are. For example, uh, you, you might look at somebody and say, well, you know, stealing is wrong. Stealing is wrong. Uh, and that includes on your income tax, cheating on your income tax. That's wrong. And uh, somebody said, well, who are you? The government has plenty of money. You know, they, 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 they don't need my money. That's not the point. It's not the point if the government needs it or not. And it's not the point if they squander it. And we all know that they do. Okay. Um, that's why we're 30 some trillion dollars in debt because of the foolish spending of our government officials. But that's not the point. The point is that according to our tax code, we as Americans have a responsibility to pay what is justifiably right for us to pay and not to fudge on it, not to hedge on it, and not to uh, lie or steal. And so when a person says, who are you to judge? It's not a matter of you judging them. It's a matter of what God's word says. God's word says, thou shalt not steal. So self-love, notice what it says also in uh, verse number two, uh, they shall be covetous covetous. In other words, uh, they're going to be money lovers. They're going to try and outdo one another. Uh, you know, if, if somebody buys a brand new uh, Cadillac, then I'm going to go out and buy a brand new BMW or, or something, that kind of mentality. Uh, if somebody goes out and buys a $200,000 home, I'm going out and buy a $300,000 home. That's the spirit of covetousness. And then it goes on to say, they will be bolsters. They will be bolsters. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 2, it says this, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Um, they, they'll be so proud of their own accomplishments and this sort of thing, they'll be boasting all the time. I don't know about you, I just don't care to be around that kind of a person. Uh, it, gets, it gets mighty boring when people are so self-absorbed. And then it goes on to say that they will be uh, proud. They will be proud. And... Uh, they will be proud of themselves, and they'll be proud of their pseudo-intellectualism. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So there will be those that are proud. You, they may have a, maybe an a, a undergraduate degree or a graduate degree or maybe even a doctorate or whatever have you, um, and they're just so proud of their accomplishments. Well, let me share something with you. Uh, God has allowed you to do whatever you've done. He has given you the ability to do it, and you ought to have a gracious and humble spirit and a thankful spirit to the Lord for him allowing you to do that. And then he talks about they shall be blasphemers. Though they shall be blasphemers in verse number two, those who would deny the faith, those who would deny the faith. Then notice in verse number two, he also talks about disobedience to parents, disobedient to parents. And uh, <clears throat> let me say this to young people today. If you can't obey your parents, you will never obey God. If you can't obey your parents, you will never obey God. You might be saying, but preacher, I'm an adult. I'm living at home. That's true. That's true. But if your parents say to you, look, we want you in by 1130 at night. You might say, well, why? Well, because we can't sleep when you're out, and we need our rest. I, we've got to get up and go to work the next day. It's not a, that's not a matter of obedience. That's a matter of respect and honoring the request of your parents. First of all, may I remind you, if you're an adult, um, you're still living at home, then you have a responsibility to be respectful of their desires and their wishes, and you have no right to not be disrespectful or to be disrespectful and say, well, I'll come in when I want to come in. Then my recommendation to you is, if that is your attitude, you can't be respectful of your parents, you can't love them enough to honor their request, then I suggest you get out on your own and quit living off mom and dad. 
And then it goes on to say, unthankful, unthankful. Uh, no sense of thankfulness to, to those, uh, to the Lord or to those that love him. Only a desire to have more. Um, you know, <clears throat> my wife and I, we say grace before every meal. If we're at home or if we're in a restaurant, which we haven't been now for many months because of COVID. But many times I'll look around as I watch people and uh, in a restaurant, and as I say, we haven't been there for many months, but I just notice how people just dive into their food with no thought of thanking God. Honestly, folks, I'm not trying to be unkind or ugly, but it reminds me of a bunch of pigs at times to, to see that kind of an attitude. It just really, really does. That uh, we just dive in and eat it up as if, you know, we, uh, uh, as we don't need to show appreciation, which is unfortunate. And then it, it goes on to say unholy, unholy. Uh, there, there will be no sense of reverence or respect for the word of God or for the son of God or for his sacrifice at Calvary. They're unholy. <coughs> unholy people. And then he says in verse number three, without natural affection, without natural affection. And um, in Romans 1, 26, the Bible says the following, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their women did change that natural use into that which is against nature. In other words, they're without natural affection. Uh, they, um, men with men and women with women, that is unnatural. That is not natural. It is not only unnatural, it is absolutely immoral. It's an immoral, vile lifestyle. Check out Romans chapter one and see what God did as, as he brings judgment upon those that are without natural affection. And then he says truce breakers in verse number three. They're truce breakers. What does that mean? They don't keep their word. They say one thing and do another. They don't keep their word. You know, um, I'm not trying to be political this morning or this evening, but I want to say something to you right now. I thank the Lord for President Trump. You know, his promises he kept. He didn't make promises to get elected and then ignore them. He made promises and he kept them and he kept more than his promises. I'm not saying that you may vote for him or against him, but the truth is the truth and the man kept his promises. And, and I thank the Lord for that. And then false accusers in verse number three, it talks about being false accusers, what does that mean? It means that they will accuse other people. Many times what I found over in life is the fact that many times when people say ugly things or unkind things about others, they're really talking about themselves, but they just want to cover it over. And I've, I've learned something in my lifetime. Uh, I don't believe uh, accusations uh, about, about others. I try to dismiss that out of my mind the best that I can. I can't say I've always been successful. I'm not going to imply that, but what I'm simply saying is, you know, until there's proof about an accusation, uh, maybe we ought not to accept it uh, and, and just recognize what it is. It's gossip at that point, and we ought not to defile our hearts and our minds with gossip. And then it goes on to say in verse number three that they are incontinent. What does that mean? It means they're intemperate. It means that they have no ability, no power to restrain oneself. They're uh, uh, out of control. Their passions are out of control. They're out of control sexually. They're just out of control. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, as the days of Noah. What were the days of Noah like? Well, let's look at Genesis chapter 6 with me. In Genesis chapter 6, and notice what the Word of God has to say there. Genesis Chapter 6, and oh, let's look at verse number 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Does that remind you of anything? The imaginations of the heart is evil. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Why? Because of the sinfulness and the waywardness of man. And then it says that they are fierce in verse number three. It goes on to say that they are uh, fierce. What does that mean? They're savages. They're savages. You know, when you think of 
some of the crimes that are committed in our streets of, of America today. Um, they're almost like savages. I uh, heard of an account of um, MS-13 group, how uh, they don't like to shoot a person. They like to use a knife on them because it's much more painful before they die. I mean, you've got to have a, a you can't have a conscience and live that way. You can't have a heart and feelings and treat other human beings that way. God have mercy, and it talks about that. In verse number three, it also goes on to say that they are despisers of those that are good, those that are good. In other words, uh, people that are good will be criticized and run down, and uh, uh, these, these people who despise good people no longer respect those who, who live right. Uh, they despise those who try to live a good life, a holy life, a pure life, and a righteous life. And then he talks about, in verse number four, traitors. Now, again, I want to remind you, this isn't outside the church. These are people inside the church who profess Christ but don't possess Christ. So he talks about traitors. They're heady, high-minded people. Uh, they know nothing about loyalty. They know nothing about loyalty. Uh, one, of the, one of the worst character traits a person can have is that of being a traitor. And it talks about uh, uh, being uh, uh, heady. Uh, that is, that uh, they are um, uh, reckless. That is, that they uh, are more concerned about their own personal achievements than they are about others. They could care less about what is right. They could care less about what is good and what is holy. They are high-minded, the Bible says. They are high-minded. And um, in 1 Timothy 4, 3, it says, or 2 Timothy 4, 3, it says this, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's true. And that's where we are today, I'm sorry to say. Then it talks about lovers of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure. Um, and uh, in Rome, uh, you know, back when they had Caesars and all this, they said, give us bread and the circus. In other words, the two main points for the people of Rome at that day were give me bread to eat and give me entertainment. And um, once again, that's contrary to Paul's philosophy of you, you don't work, you don't eat. And then he talks about them having a form of godliness in verse number five, having a form of godliness. They have a lot of religion, but no possession of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he talks about seducers in verse number six. He says, for of this sort, are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. Uh, that is, they are people who deceive and they are people who have been deceived. They are false teachers. They are false teachers that prey on women that are la laden or heavy, have a heavy burden of sin upon themselves. They check, uh, uh, they, they, you can check them out. They're in false cults and this sort of thing. Um, and you, you just look at the false cults. They are predominated by women. Dr. H.A. Ironside said this about feminism, and this is well before feminism became a common word. He says this, no, you will not find the word, but read verse six again. Verse, uh, he's talking about here in verse number six, 2 Timothy chapter three. Slowly and thoughtfully, does it not indicate a great feminist movement in these dark days? Well, let's go back to it. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. I think Dr. Ironsides was right. I think he was right. When you think about that, um, he's not talking about women that uh, don't have any uh, brains when he talks about uh, silly women. He's not, Paul's not talking about that. He's talking about those that are just not stable. They're simply not stable. They, they fluctuate. They, they just go with the wind. Think with me about the founder of Christian Science, Mary Baker Glover Eddy. Think with me about the founder of the Seventh-day Adventist, Ellen G. White. Think with me about the woman who founded New Thought, uh, Eka Wheeler Wilcox. These were and are, well, were silly women. So. 
we need to look very carefully and recognize that these are the attributes of the last days. And uh, we need to be careful with that. Uh, we need to make sure that these people don't influence our lives. What, what's he say in verse 7? Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. What is truth? Jesus Christ. My dear friend, <clears throat> the last days of the church on earth are going to be difficult days and challenging days. I trust that even now, if you are not saved, you'll put your trust and confidence in him. If you are saved, that you'll stay in a Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church, that you'll listen to the word of God, let it sink deep into your heart, let it control your every decision. And I know that you'll be glad when you get to heaven that you did. Don't let anyone lead you down a false path of, uh, with false doctrine and this sort of thing. <coughs> and this sort of thing. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. But rather that we reign firm, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let's pray. Now, Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for this opportunity to look into the word of God. Lord, I thank you for this dear church. And Lord, for the 140 plus years of history that it has of always being a fundamental, independent, Bible-believing Baptist Church, and we thank you for that and praise you for that, Lord. Keep it so till Jesus comes. And Lord, we do pray for those that may be listening to my voice that do not know Christ. Lord, I pray that they might recognize their need of a Savior and simply ask Him to come into their heart by faith, by simply praying, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and to save me from my sins. I receive you now by faith into my heart. Thank you for dying for me. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good night. We'll look forward to seeing you next week.